Want a fresca? Would you like a fresca? Would you like a fresca? Fuck fresca. Now, The Boys is a show that flips everything you think you know about superheroes on its head. Superhero oversaturation has never been higher, with Marvel constantly slapping us in the face with movie after movie until there isn't a cinema goer on the planet who doesn't have a black eye. I've never seen a show with so many no-no words and no-no scenes. Don't be a pussy, laser my fucking tits. The Boys parodies almost any superhero you can think of in a realistic and gritty way. And that realism is done so well. The world is messed up, and I think we all act a little bit selfish and self-centred from time to time. If regular people got superpowers, I don't think many of us would use them to save lives. I know I probably wouldn't. The writers of The Boys know this and use it to their advantage, not just parodying superheroes, but the entertainment industry as a whole. Vought, the corporation in the show which is responsible for creating and managing all superheroes, much like with Hollywood, is all about the image. Crafting a narrative that these egotistical maniacs are just true American heroes who want to fight crime and look handsome while doing it. It sounds like a movie, and The Boys shows that these heroes are just actors being managed like any other actor would be in a regular Hollywood production. Like, smile what the hell is this? You yeah, stand over him and say this is lit. Oh hey, Jimmy. Catch my dive in the water? It's fucking cherry. Assistants and managers are constantly talking about how many points the heroes are up or down in the show, and how the public is perceiving them. My speech last night, 38.6 rating and a 59 share. Oh, and they're saying that the Live Plus 3s are going to be even bigger. Any act or moment that may seem natural from the public's point of view is really a carefully crafted moment from Vaught in order to help them sell their superhero related merchandise and movies. And it's the little details like the points that make the world of the boys feel so real. But my favourite way that the boys makes their world feel like we're part of it is their use of advertising on the YouTube channel Vort International. This channel is run as though it's the actual Vort from the show. And there's quite a lot of content on it. Hell, they've got more content than I do. Speaking of, maybe drop a little like and I'll uh, maybe come up with some more boys content just for you. Just for you personally. No one else, just you. Now, there's very little mention of the boys on this channel, maybe right at the end of the description or right at the end of the video, in order to make it feel as real as possible. And the content they put out is the kind of stuff that you might see Disney Plus or Netflix put out on their YouTube channels. And this is a pretty cheap form of advertising and works as bonus content for the boys. When you click on Vault International, some playlists appear. Up first is music videos. And these music videos aren't in the show, at least not in their entirety. You'll see a little glimpse of them in passing, but it's maybe 10 seconds or so. So I like how they made them a full version, seeing as they had to make a little part of it anyway, so it probably wouldn't cost much more to just make the whole thing. One is Starlight, as she sings a little jig in remembrance of a great, true American hero and pervert, Translucent, who had the ability to turn invisible and use that power like any 80s high school movie protagonist would to hang out in the bathroom and spawn people taking fat dumps. The music video is in black and white, which as we all know, makes something way more deep and makes me cry every single time. What I love so much about this is that in the show, Starlight maybe met Translucent once before he died. He died in episode two, but the implication, the implication watching this music video is that they were just so close that Starlight felt the need, you know, she had to make this song in remembrance of her fallen comrade. Also, a highlight of this video and this channel as a whole is the descriptions and the comments. They're just always so golden. And they make it so much more immersive. The description doesn't list the singer as Erin Moriarty, the actress. It lists it as Starlight, the character. There are links to the Vault social media accounts, which are labelled Join the Vault Family. And it makes this company feel so much more real, but also hollow, as in real life you get companies which call their employees family. And it's like, no, we're not family. You're my boss, I'm your employee. So stop trying to pull on my heartstrings. We're not family. This isn't Fast and Furious. The comments are always people being ironic, posting as if they're part of the general public in the boys' universe, who see these heroes as gods and can do no wrong, and have no idea how truly awful these heroes are because of what Vought's been feeding them, swaying the public's perception. At the end of the video it says, now streaming on hashtag Vortify, a piss take of Spotify, and the whole video is a great parody of companies who try and monetize on tragedies for their own gain. The second playlist is now on Vort Plus. These three are trailers for content which doesn't actually exist, but boy do I wish they did because these look awful and I mean that in the best way possible. We get a trailer for Dawn of the Seven, a parody of superhero team up movies like The Avengers, but mainly Justice League which fits really well as most of the characters in The Seven are parodies of Justice League members. Homelander is a piss take of Superman. Black Noir is Batman. 
Queen Maeve is Princess Diana, aka Wonder Woman. Rapper and hero A Train is The Flash. And Aquaman is The Deep. Ivy also likes to get balls deep in fish. This trailer has a colourless palette to it, which is a common complaint of DC's movies. We see them spin what happened in season 2 of The Boys into something completely different which fits Vought's narrative. Because if the public knew the truth, then that would look bad on Vought and we can't have that. So may as well turn this into a marketing play. And a really nice detail is that this isn't just Dawn of the Seven. This is Dawn of the Seven, the Burke cut. A parody of film movements like Release the Snyder Cut. By parodying events that happened in real life, The Boys makes us feel like we're part of this superhero filled world even more. Next up is a trailer for American Hero, a reality TV show which takes place in The Boys universe. The best way to describe this show is by comparing it to The Bachelor, where young girls battle it out in a contest to win one bachelor's heart, except instead of young girls, it's superheroes. Instead of the prize being a night of hanky panky with an eligible bachelor, the prize is you get to become one of the seven, Earth's most mighty and brave, basically sending you immediately into an insane amount of fame. The video takes on a kind of house tour, architectural digest type style, where Ashley, one of Vought's top marketing dogs, gives us a tour of the mansion where the show will be taking place. Before this, we don't really know too much about the selection process of the seven and how you get in. I mean, we know it's carefully calculated to provide a group which will tick as many boxes as possible in order to reach the biggest audience, with Starlight only being chosen to appeal to the Christian crowd. But that's about all we really know about it. The American Hero series shows it's pretty much nothing to do with skill and all to do with popularity and points. The first of the two selections and the newest member of the seven is supersonic <laughs> which is pretty common with reality tv in hollywood so much of it is rigged based on who's getting the most attention in order to keep them in the show the longest also look at how aggressively patriotic this logo is i mean jesus christ that's a lot of stars i'm gonna go blind this trailer is topped off with a lovely little advertisement for vort water or water the heroes want me to remind you to stay hydrated with vort water Sneaking in little mentions of the most random Vought products is something which is pretty commonly seen throughout this channel, and they never fail to get a little giggle and a little out of me. And lastly, my personal most hyped Vought Plus movie is Not Without My Dolphin, the movie starring the Bulls Deep. A tragic true story of the Deep's struggle as he tries to escape the cult known as the Collective, who absolutely love a fresco. They guzzle that stuff like splooge, I'm telling you. Yeah. Want a fresco? Would you like a fresca? Would you like a fresca? Fuck fresca. And I gotta give a lot of respect to The Deep's actor, Chase Crawford. In this trailer, he's playing The Deep, playing himself. So he has to play a convincing bad actor, but not too bad where it's over the top and he nails it. <laughs> this look cracks me up every time and this little wall slam where his little fin thing just wobble about. It's so good. Also, I'm editing this video right now and uh, Chase Crawford was actually arrested for a, a heinous crime, a heinous crime indeed. Possession of marijuana. And not just any amount of marijuana, one marijuana joint. Lock this man away. The movie shown looks so over the top and the writing looks so on the nose that it looks like a perfect parody of Hallmark movies and the kind of stuff that you see on daytime TV. This trailer props up the deep as this sensitive hero who overcame his fears and found love which helped him escape this cult when the truth is the deep is the most pathetic and cowardly arse leg out of all of the superheroes on the show. He's the comic relief and a joke to absolutely everyone. Much how like in the DC, Aquaman is a joke to everyone, before they tried to make him cool again by casting the most macho actor they could think of. So because of this trailer, when we see The Deep try and make a comeback in the latest season of The Boys, we believe it even more because this is what the public in The Boys universe have been being fed all this time. He wasn't kicked out of the collective, he was brainwashed and overcame that in order to flee, and we can sympathise with him. And this film being made solo budget and on Vought Plus, fits the Deep's character so well as he's the runt of the seven. He doesn't get the big movies, no no no, we're putting him on the streaming service. Why does that sound familiar? Oh yeah, Hawkeye. MCU's Hawkeye has been around since four, and there's four fours now. He's one of the OG Avengers, and yet Disney still won't give him his own movie. They gave him a six part Disney Plus exclusive. But yeah, my point is that this trailer just hammers down how low down in the seven's ranks the Deep is. At the end, we see that the movie is sponsored by Lean Lady's Frozen Dinners. Not without my dolphin. Brought to you by Lean Lady Frozen Dinners by Vought. Just another great product which shows Vought's reach and makes them feel more realistic. 
Payback is another superhero team in the boys universe, the OGs who came before the Seven and Homeboy Lander. And they've got all the classics. Show me someone who hasn't heard of My Storm. No, Mind Storm. Who blasts your brain more than a hit of DMT behind the bins of your local pub. And who could forget lovable Swatto, who can fly. I mean, that's a pretty original superpower. You've got the TNT twins who host orgies together, which seems progressive. Crimson Countess, she's red. But the star of the team, the homelander of the 80s, is none other than Soldier Boy. And boy, can he crank that. Move aside, Captain America. Soldier Boy is what you would most likely really get if you brought a superhero movie star from the 80s into today. So he's a bit racist and doesn't believe in shell shock. He calls everyone a giant puss and looks handsome while doing it. Okay, well, <laughs> Bill Cosby is America's dad, and I'll tell you one thing, he wouldn't be caught dead in that pussy gear. Much like with Captain America, the purpose of Soldier Boy was to inspire the troops and to help with the fight in World War II. But when the idea was in focus of America shifted after the war ended, Ford decided it needed a new hero which was more up to date and current and more powerful and easier to control. And so we got Lil Baby Homelander. Soldier Boy represents the great American hero of the times, or what the public would want to see of one. He's tough, a soldier, a leader, and he has a deep voice. But through season three of The Boys, we learn that his whole shtick is just that, a shtick. He didn't actually see any battle or action during World War II, just showed up for the photos and the glory afterwards. Another bit of fakeness and hypocrisy from him is his view on the no-no drugs sweeping America at the time. And this is done through a PSA. Now, Captain America has a lot of PSAs throughout his time in the MCU. PSAs from American heroes were quite a big thing back in the day. Who are you going to listen to more, the government or your friendly neighborhood hero? And Vault International parodied these videos by posting a PSA from Soldier Boy talking about drugs and how uncool they are. The American flag is right behind him and it really does feel like this was ripped from the 80s with the aspect ratio, the visual quality and the audio quality, it's all just chef's kiss. He tells us about how drugs are ruining lives and if someone offers us drugs to tell them Taking drugs is not cool and anyone who does is a loser. Which has to be the most old fashioned opinion I've heard on drug abuse but it fits. I love how the description says hit the subscribe button to honour homeboy's legacy. Homeboy? Soldier Boy's legacy. As if Homeboy even knows what YouTube is, he's like older than your grandpa. And at the end it says, approved by the Vore Ad Council, as if that means anything. And yeah, this ad is funny, goofy and silly, but how does it improve the show? Well, in the show we see that Soldier Boy is blasted off his face in so many scenes. Let's go to the top. <laughs> if taking drugs is uncool, I'm the most uncool motherfucker on the planet. <laughs> Fuck you. He does the weed, he smokes the reefer. Whoa, 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 hold on. Is Soldier Boy a loser? The face of Vought's anti-drug company loves a smoke. Just hammering down how fake these superheroes really are. And Soldier Boy was the first. It's not a new thing. These heroes have always been awful. And this company has always been trying to spin a narrative. Also in the boys universe, heroes aren't born with powers. They get them through a drug called V which is unknown to the public. And in most cases, it happens when you're a baby, so you might not even know that this happened to you. But in Soldier Boy's case, he willingly underwent this drug trial, which would make him stronger and better, which sounds a lot like steroids. And so this whole anti-drug PSA is just so hollow. The next video on this playlist is a smooth performance from our one and only hero, Soldier Boy. And you might be thinking, Waterwave, I've already seen the ending of 8 Mile. Why are you showing me this? But I know you might be fooled. This is no Eminem. It's a superhero rendition of Blondie's Rapture, and he's spitting out some liquid fire. Subaru, and you don't stop. You keep on eating cars. Then, when there's no more cars, you go out at night. I know Kendrick's just made his return, but in my opinion, all eyes should be on Soldier Boy. He's one to watch this year. The video is a guest performance from him on a real show called Solid Gold, which aired from 1980 to 1988 and had some musical performances just chucked in there for good luck. And they do a great job of recreating the show. There are random stars just flying all over the place, which is pretty common in the 80s to have things just flying all over the screen. It seems like they just discovered visual effects and were kind of abusing them, checking them in wherever they could, which I can relate to. The backup dancers wearing skin tight leotards just make me want a boogie woogie. And the song itself is bizarre. I'll be honest, when I first heard this song, I thought it was a parody like the boys were doing a different version from the original song, 
but no, this is the actual lyrics. Maybe I'm missing some context, but I don't know. I mean, it is definitely funky. They're talking about a man from Mars and eating cars and then eating the man from Mars and then eating bars and the bars are filled with people and it's just a fucking wild ride. Yeah, I suggest you look up the lyrics. And another amazing description on this one, where it actually says that this was Soldier Boy's last performance before he tragically disappeared. And not only that, shortly after, he was posthumously awarded a Rammy for Best Special Guest Performance. And I love how they call it a Rammy. Like, the simplicity of taking world famous companies and shows and just replacing one letter with V to make it part of the Vought umbrella is just so fucking good. And it further shows Vought's reach yet again. The final instalment in the Payback Saga is another song from none other than America's Sweet heart, Crimson Countess. She's red. And it's titled Chimps Don't Cry. This lady loves chimps. Chimps are like heroin to her. She just can't get enough of them. And this might be my favourite description of any video on this channel. Vought cares about simian well-being. So for the next seven hours, 1% of every big homie burger sold will be donated to Crimson Countess's Chimp Country Foundation to help trouble chimps. Like, I'm sure that 1% will help. And I love how it's only for seven hours. It's just, that's nothing. That's probably like 2p. It's the most corporate thing I've ever heard of. And there's the implication. The implication. That Vought owns yet another food company, Big Homie Burger. The song is a heartbreaking ballad about how chimps may want to cry, but they're physically incapable of doing so, which is pretty balls deep if you ask me. The opening font and love heart transition are just so amateur it fits the song so well. It's truly showing an artist in the height of her career. She's prancing and skipping all over the place and it's just beautiful. I mean this is a genius move from the boys marketing team as this song and video would cost very little to make, which is by choice. It goes with the theme and aesthetic that this hero is past her heyday and is now making weird low budget music about very obscure topics. Can't cry. The green screen is so noticeable and the set is literally just a field in the middle of nowhere. I mean, I feel like I could make this, you know? Once they ruled the Sahara where the emerald grasslands swayed, a majestic primate whose legend starts to fade. Beating their chests in sadness, you will hear them as they wail. Us, but us. they don't have no tear ducts, so their face can't tell the tale. In the heart of the jungle, just trying to stay alive. alive. It takes more than just bananas for a species to survive. Massive fucking spider again. Fuck that, I'm not going back in. Fuck that shit. Ultimately, I think companies can learn a lot from the boys' marketing. Creating posts and videos which work as both advertising and entertainment, which ultimately makes the world feel more real and brings in more views, as these videos are quite enjoyable and comedic, which tends to get more views, as well as leading to more shares and inside jokes. If you've sat through the whole thing, thank you very much. And uh, if you want to see some more of my artwork, like the stuff you're seeing in the background here, this is all my own stuff, then check out my Instagram. I'll put it here. Yeah, here. Yeah, you can go there, can't it? Is that allowed? Are you allowing that? So this is my fifth video. I haven't got many subscribers. I think about 18, 19. So if you want to be lucky number 20, then press that button. And um, I've got more kooky, crazy videos coming out about anything you can imagine, anything you can want to see. Thank you. I love you. Goodbye.